All right, so here we sit. Three more days under this heat warning could even be extended, heaven forbid. We'll worry about that when we when we cross that bridge. But that means that many of you are still at risk, honestly, for some serious health issues. Ed Herman of Brown and Crouppen joins us to talk about warning signs and prevention. We've said it on this show many times, an ounce of prevention worth, worth more pound. than a pound of cure, really. It, it absolutely is. And, you know, you know, we try to use our segments on here. We try to talk about legal issues, but sure. so often safety issues are connected to legal issues. And... You know, for me personally, I guess I'm like most people, but I always hate the heat. Uh, I'm e so even, with you. Even when there's no advisory. Even <laughs> when they're like, go enjoy it. It's beautiful outside. It's 85. I, I, I you know, I don't go out. You say but, bring on October. Yeah, yeah. I, I tend to like the fall a little bit better. But it is dangerous out there. And the more days in a row that you get of this heat, the more dangerous it becomes. Because whether or not everybody is properly replenishing their fluids on a daily basis, um, you know, it's probably not that likely. And every day, the toll it takes on you just keeps mounting. It's cumulative. That's exactly right. I don't think people realize that. Just because you make it through day one unscathed doesn't mean that your body's going to react the same way to day four, day five, day six. And I think people don't really understand hydration. I don't think they understand what your body does with the water. Mm -hmm. I think they think, oh, you know, I drink it so that I can sweat and stay cool. But every organ in your body needs that water. It needs to stay hydrated. Your body needs to be flowing like a lazy river. And if you're not constantly replenishing the fluids, and in this case, uh, we recommend you know, sports drinks and not just water because sure. you, know, you sweat out a lot more than water, uh, your body will start to shut down. I know I've been through periods of dehydration where the cramping that goes on in your legs uh, is so bad that you, you can't even straighten your legs out. So th there are plenty of dangers to be had there. And I know you know a lot of this, obviously, well, knowing the weather issues. Sure, absolutely. And we've been talking about it, you know, ad nauseum for the feels like the yeah. last month now. But let's talk about some more of those signs because there's really kind of two tiers. There's heat exhaustion, which goes along with dehydration sometimes. And then there's the much more serious heat stroke, too. And it's important to know. Right. Well, the, the easiest way to tell the difference is with heat exhaustion. You look terrible, but you're still sweating profusely. Right. Your body is going on overdrive trying to cool itself down. Yeah. But when you get to heat stroke, you don't have any sweat left. You're literally dry and sandy. And when that happens, your body temperature can escalate fast. I mean, I'm talking 106 degrees or hotter. That's not which good. Which could be <laughs> deadly for, yeah. you know, for an adult and an elderly person especially. So, you know, you have to catch these things early and you have to take them seriously. I mean, I, I think that people just think, oh, you know, cool them down a little bit and that'll do the trick. Obviously, you want to cool the person down, but, sure. you know, you, you probably have to call in some, some medical experts. Get a person to air conditioning as quickly as possible. Right. Shade is nice. Air conditioning is better uh, because uh, it, it gets very, very dangerous. We have an quickly. attorney in our midst, so it seems like yeah. to me it makes sense to talk about uh, workplace safety in regards to heat. I see the MoDOT yeah. and the Illinois Department of Transportation guys out there. I see roofing contractors out there in this. I passed some this morning. It's yeah. very scary. And I would say this, if there is a legal tie-in that, you know, if you're an employer and you know your employees are working outside in this type of weather, you have to take some additional safety precautions to make sure that your workers stay safe in this weather. Um, you got to make sure they take more frequent breaks. Don't just follow the normal rules of an hour for lunch and a couple 15-minute breaks. They may have to break 15 minutes out of every hour, seriously, just to sit down, to drink, to compose themselves. Try to have cooling devices on premises, you know, any way that you can, cooling tents, misters, anything that you have to set up to keep your workers cool because if they get yeah. injured, as a result of the heat on the job, that's not an act of God. That's preventable. Mm. And you will be held accountable under workers' compensation laws for injuries that occur to them due to the heat. There you go. And bravo, by the way, to the two department of trans departments of transportation locally because I've seen workers out at night on both sides of the river. So that's, that's good thinking. and something I haven't seen nearly as much in past summers. As right. Year, or you so. could do what my mom says to do. Just stay inside in the air conditioning. <laughs> Listen to records. You don't <laughs> have to go to, to the records. Well, that was with the U2 concert. Everybody was concerned about the heat. Yeah. Just listen to their records. You don't have to be outside. <laughs> if Ed Herman's mom says it's so, it's so. It's so. Ed, thank you very much. If you have a legal question for Brown and Crouppen, email us at greatday at camov.com. We'll make sure they get it.